June 1996. NASA's Galileo spacecraft is six months into its exploration of the Jupiter system. As it passes Jupiter, its electronic gaze turns to one of the gas giant's ice-covered moons, Ganymede. The probe's magnetic readings reveal something totally unexpected. An entire world covered with ice. But underneath that ice, an ocean. That ocean contains more water than the Pacific, despite the fact that Ganymede is smaller than the Earth. The discovery raises excitement among scientists worldwide. Whenever you discover water on another planet, the first thing you think of is life. How could there not be extensive life in that big ocean? But if life exists in the depths of Ganymede's seas, it faces many challenges. Ganymede has oceans, but they're not like the oceans on Earth. Perhaps the greatest challenge life there would face is the thick ice that covers the water. Ganymede's a different world. If we imagine the habitat on Ganymede, it's going to be a thick layer of ice. Too much ice at the top for sunlight to get down. Pitch black, there's no sunlight. It's freezing cold and there's no oxygen. How can life possibly thrive? Maybe because I study life in Antarctica, I'm more of an optimist about the ability of life to survive harsh conditions. Surprisingly, Ganymede's deepest waters offer the best hope for finding life. This is a world that has oceans and layers. It has ice, water, ice, water, ice, water. It looks like a striped cake. To have life, you really want rocks and water together because they produce the elements that living things need. Where you want to look for life is going to be in that last ocean level because it's in contact with rock. So if we're looking for life on Ganymede, we're going all the way to the bottom.